Hey, what's up guys? My name is Ronnie Troy and today we're gonna talk about something that's been like a hot topic lately in like graphic world, 3D world, and that is the AI generated artworks, right? So in special like Dolly and Mid Journey type of things. So like every other fucking 3D artist I've seen this and I've actually like read around and watch what other people have to say about it and obviously there's like two sides right there's people who are concerned about this type of thing because you get a lot of people that are gonna pretend that they're doing art and they, like maybe artists are not gonna be needed anymore the same way as they have been up until now and then you have the other side of people that actually like really enjoy this and I myself um, I'd have to say both sides like this is pretty weird right this is pretty weird because you have like a fucking machine that does what we artists get to do in like fucking months or weeks of work maybe days best case scenario right and you just type some fucking thing in there and you get like this fucking cool fucking shit that I would that would take me like fucking days to create but on the other hand I think there's like really a, a really good practical way of using mid journey and the way I was thinking of doing it is the following right so I've been working in video games that's my main kind of suit to to do 3d work 3d work and working in 3d pretty much goes like this right I'm, a, I'm an environment artist so I make environments like the levels where players are playing so it kind of goes like this there's a, an art director that has like a fucking vision it has like an idea and then he hires a concept artist right the concept artist is the guy that draws like sketches and draws things and the art director goes to the concept artist and tells him like look dude I have this idea uh, about something and it kind of looks like this here's a few reference images can you do something and get my vision on a fucking paper and then the concept artist goes and he's like yeah dude let me get my canvas he's gonna blah 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 he's gonna draw in there he's gonna make some some amazing uh, thing right he's make like he makes like a great uh, concept art and then like the production goes to the next step and he goes to like an environment an environment artist such as me and tells me like look dude here's a concept artist go make it real go make it 3d go make it an actual thing and i'm there like sure dude give me that and i'm just gonna create it in 3d everybody's happy so uh but now how do i kind of like implement this like mid journey type of thing so every time i'm doing a personal project i always am i'm pretty much always limited by finding really good reference images or really good concept art right pretty much all the artworks i've made in the past are some kind of deriv derivatives from some like really cool concept art i found online right so i'm just browsing art station i'm looking looking at concept art and i find something that kind of grinds my gears <laughs> you know that's something that's pretty much interesting and i like it and i say cool i'm just gonna make this and turn it into 3d and i'm gonna switch a few things around here so it looks more like what i would like it to look if it, that makes sense but i've never liked the fact that i'm always limited by finding the right reference image image or finding like the right concept so here comes mid journey because right now with mid journey i can just tell that dude like tell the like the fucking machine like look man i'm thinking about this and this and this and this and this and this right it, it it would be like almost impossible to find like that exact like reference image or uh like concept art for for what i'm thinking and by the way i suck at drawing right i'm never gonna be able to just sit down open up some photoshop and just throw my vision no i can do that if i try to do that i'm not gonna like what what comes out of it and i'm gonna just throw it away uh, it's not it's not for me it's not my strong suit so instead what i have what i can do now is i can just open up discord i can go into the mid journey channel and i can tell it like look dude 
From now on, you are my own personal concept artist. And I'm going over there and telling like, look dude, I have like this vision of like really dark forest with stuff around it and all of that. And he's like, I got you bro. <laughs> and he spits like four images. Maybe I like them, maybe I don't. But if I don't, I just tell him like, do something else cause I don't like this shit. And he's like, right on dude, I'm gonna make some other things. And then I get like a custom made, like tailored made concept art. That's exactly, more or less, exactly the way I have envisioned it, right? And that's ex extremely powerful because right now, by doing this, I will never ever be limited bef again by finding the right concept art or by searching our station or like Google or finding something that like makes me interested. Because right now I have like a head full of ideas and nothing can stop me. I'm all the way up. <laughs> no, nothing can stop me now because I have mid journey. I can tell that dude like what I want, and he's gonna say like, "Yeah, bro, I got you. I'm your, like, your, I'm your own assistant, I'm your own concept art. I'm doing things for free." So for that matter, I thought of starting a a series, right? A mid journey to actual 3D uh, series. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna jump over on Discord. I, I bought myself a subscription for, for Mid Journey. So I'm gonna jump in there and I'm gonna tell that dude, like, look what, look dude, I have those ideas. I have those ideas in there and just spit something up. And then we are going to take that image and actually turn it into 3D. And that's gonna be amazing. So stay tuned for what we are gonna do here because I really believe this is something you are going are gonna enjoy and you are, are gonna be able to implement into your like, own workflow. Just type imagine and I went with a mystical overgrown cave, hyper realistic cinematic lighting, epic view, a character standing in the middle magical beautiful you know all those really nice words magical tale and then just have it do its thing right and i'm waiting for it and i'm just waiting around to see what this bot is gonna speed up so the first thing that came into existence using this um using this mid journey is this thing right here and i really like those compositions like just from the start those look amazing and i pretty much like all of them and after this i just went in and i created a few variations for the first one the second one and the fourth one right those i thought were the, the best looking and I get in, I'm getting some variations and whatnot. Getting some variations and whatnot. And like this is. Those are the ones that I really liked. And the reason I liked those was because one, they are looking like really cool. And second of all, I thought that I could make this in like really, really fast. And like one or two hours I would be able to recreate this image inside of Blender and then I went out and I really liked like this third image and I just upscaled it and this is what I got now when you upscale something in mid journey it tends to like change the image the initial image a little bit and add a lot more detail and high frequency like detail as you can see there's a, a bunch more detail on the on the left on the right on, on those like rocky surfaces there's a lot more noise down here and this is not what i want usually when i'm looking for like a reference image or a concept art i want it to be pretty vague in a way I want it to be like detailed enough that I understand what's going on, but not so detailed that I get uh, like overwhelmed by the, all the detail that, that's in there, right? Because if it's like full of detail, then I'm getting over, overwhelmed. I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do first. And it pretty much seems like I won't be able to achieve 
uh, like the reference image. So what you do after you upscale that, you just like press the light, upscale, redo, and it's gonna pretty much upscale the same thing, but it's just gonna take away some of that, some of those like high frequency details, and it's gonna bring the image to be more like the initial first thing, right? And this is the light upscale thing. And as you can see, there's far less high frequency detail, but like it's detailed enough that I understand what's going on, right? I understand the layout, I understand the lighting, I understand the colors, I understand like the composition, I understand all the things I want, but yet I'm not overwhelmed by what hell's going on in here. And pretty much this is the, the image I used to, to create my final render. And yeah, of course, it's not like one-on-one -on -one with this guy, but I never actually intended to be like one-on-one -on -one thing. I just want to have an idea about like the layout, like the composition and the lighting. And that's pretty much all I want from a concept art, uh, from a concept art. The rest is all up to me and I can do whatever the hell I want with it. So I'm always starting out with a like random character in there just to make sure that the scale is right. And first thing I've, I'm doing is to get the camera in in the cert, in that kind of like composition, right? I'm using a 24 millimeter and now all I'm trying to do is just take a subdivided uh, plane and just move it around in order to form like that arc uh, that stone arc that we you see in the in the in the reference image right and all i'm doing is taking a plane subdividing like a lot and then just using the proportional editing tool to just move things around and this is all i've done for like the, the cliffs for like the sides the rocky sides afterwards it's all about getting a rock texture that you like and also has like a displacement map for the texture and use that texture to like pretty much sculpt those cliffs without actually doing like any kind of work right you i've just done the base shape and now i can slap a displacement map on top of it and it creates like an actual cliff that is a rock surface so that's what you see me here doing right i've added a bunch of a, a bunch of subdivision levels you can see there's like five and i'm getting like this super crisp and detailed displacement which i really like Afterwards, I try to do the first like step on lighting. I know like from the reference image, you can see that this is a backlit uh, image. So I'm just throwing a sun in there and like trying to position it a little bit, but I'm changing this afterwards because I love working with area lights and I hate working with uh, sunlight just because I have a lot more control over it. Uh, I'm doing, I'm just, playing with the lighting a little bit and I'm trying to move things around and see what the hell is going on, right? I'm just trying to get like the base, uh, the base of things. Here I'm just using a random rock and just adding the, that in the foreground just to add a little bit more, more detail in there so it's not like the, the same rock. And now I'm using Botanic. I have this add-on on Blender. You can check it out from Blender Market and it gives you a lot of really cool uh, foliage like trees, ivies, grass, and shrubs, rocks, whatever you, you name it, you have it in here, right? You have vines and all that fucking things. So I'm grabbing a few. Actually, I'm just grabbing one tree and I'm using that in order to like create the whole like vegetation around it. So you see me using just one simple tree and I'm just duplicating and rotating it and scaling it around in the background trying to make that dense forest look uh, behind like in the background it doesn't have to make any sense because the camera is all all it's always going to be in this uh, in this spot it's never going to move around so you see what's going on now I'm trying to light this scene with an HDRI because I wasn't really pleased with uh, the way it looked when I when I used that sun lamp and when I switched to an area light. So I'm starting to use an HDRI maybe to get like a more realistic lighting. But in the end, I I just screw this thing and use the the area light as an as a main source. I'm browsing through HDRIs and finding something that's a little bit more interesting. 
Now it's time to make the water, which is just a plane and has a like noise texture in the, in the, uh, plugged into the bump map, and that's giving like the ripple effect. Uh, I don't really like the water because it looks like shit, and I tried to improve it, but uh, honestly, I didn't really feel like spending too much time making some body of water, so I just went with it. Um, more playing with the lighting. The lighting, the m the faster you can get into like the layout, like the composition and the light, the final lighting, then the easier it's going to be to make everything else because you have all those things in place and it kind of looks the way you want it to look. So everything else is just gonna fall into place by itself. So here, this is what I'm trying to do always, right? I'm trying to get the composition first, get the lighting close to like the final thing and then just work from there and it's just so much more efficient to do it this way than to move around and do things from all the fucking perspectives around and then you get like overwhelmed with all the things that you have to do and most things that are not even going to be seen from the camera perspective because they are not in, like in in your face so if you're not going to really see, then don't spend time on it. You, you're just wasting time, right? So here I'm just playing around with lighting and now I'm adding like a big volumetric body because f I know fog is a really like big thing in this render. As you can see it in the reference images, a bunch of uh, like thick fog in the background that's really making this image pop and I need to take uh, take this into consideration right so I'm making the fog and then as you can see I've gotten the lighting in a interesting way in a close to final uh, thing and now it's time to like work on the background a little bit more I'm just copying and rotating stuff in order to make the background a lot more interesting and if I didn't take care of the lighting first then all the things that I'm doing right now would have looked like shit and I would have been uh, I, would have, I wouldn't have been happy with it. So just by getting the lighting right, you get the things to look uh, correct when you, when you play around and you're not wasting time thinking that it looks like shit. Okay, so I'm getting another rock just to like add it around there a little bit, just to add like a little bit of interest here in the, in the foreground. I'm making like an edge over there so you, you can really see where the water ends and now I'm using this free IV generator it's like a geometry nodes setup that you can get from Gumroad I'm gonna leave a link in the description it's free everyone can get it and it basically just procedurally adds IVs on top of objects and I wanted to do that with my cliffs here in, in the foreground because it makes sense that if there's so much humidity and like vegetation around there's gonna be some vegetation growing on top of those cliffs and it also looks a lot more interesting because it breaks the silhouette and those things like play with with the lighting so much better right so you can see just how much detail you get from this ivy generator just a bunch of of like cool interesting details i'm playing around with the lighting with the color because it was pure white so i switched it up to like a more warm color right more like a sunset type of thing playing around with the background a little bit more and now everything is too green so I decided to add a couple of flowers in there just to bring in a little bit more color and switch up all that like green color that's everywhere right so you see me adding some orange in there and adding some blue uh, plants in there just enough to like add a little bit more color and contrast into this environment and make it look like more interesting now one thing that I'm always doing and I always recommend you do it as well is create like a foreground element that's framing up your entire shot. You can see me here like duplicating those trees and getting them like really really close into the camera so they're gonna be like really out of focus. focus. But this creates a lot of, first it creates a lot of depth into your shot and second it creates like a nice frame around your, around your like shot around your frame right and it just looks a lot more better and I recommend you do this with pretty much any render you make here you see me like just randomly putting stuff in front of the camera to to, to add that kind of depth 
Now I realize that the shot is a little bit too uh, too bright, right? I want this thing in the middle where the, the guy is standing to be a little a little bit more uh, darker. So I decided to pretty much turn off the, the whole HDRI image, right? And I only used it f just like a strength of 0.2, just enough to get a little bit of ambient light in there so I don't have like pitch black cliffs. But in the end, I wanted like this darker feeling, uh, this darker like, lighting. Right now, I decided that it's it's it would be cool to add like a spotlight that's uh, falling down onto into our main character here in the middle, and I want to make it a bluish color, just enough to be to like compensate for the warm color that's coming from the back. Right, so I'm playing around with, with a spotlight. I don't want to. I want it to be pretty subtle. I don't want there to be like an actual source of light. I just want like an ambient kind of color going on in there. And this is pretty much all of it. And it only took like one and one hour and like 15 minutes to get this point. Right, I'm adding a little bit more ivies around there to make everything more grounded into the scene. I'm playing a little bit more with the water because as I said, I was really unhappy with how it looked, but I wasn't really gonna spend a lot of time on it because I didn't care that much for this. And now it's time for me to like add like the actual character. This is a random scan. I'm selecting all the skin parts because I want to make it a separate material because the skin should have like subsurface scattering around in it. And I'm just placing the guy in there, making sure the focus is uh, is targeted on him. And this is the final image, right? I'm just playing around with the lighting a little bit and just going into rendering this thing. And then just simply post-processing into Photoshop. So there we have it guys, this is like the final image. As you can see on the left, this is the image that Midjourney gave me, given my prompt, and on the right is my final render, which, yeah, it's like, like it's not one-on-one -on -one with the concept that I've uh, worked on, and I have like a random dude in here instead of like this mysterious cape man, but again, it's not about making it one-on-one -on -one with what I have in there, it's about getting an idea right because if i didn't have this concept on the left then i would have spent like a lot of time searching for uh, reference images or like looking around my mind and understanding what the hell i want to create but with mid journey i was able to get like really fast iterations on the concept on the layout on the lighting on all those aspects and then just make it like an actual 3d environment mm -hmm.